the best sort of resolution that you can get is sort of sub millimeter, maybe half a millimeter, and that is nowhere near enough to look at neural networks. Um, the, the problem with functional imaging, as I see it anyway, is that uh, one is looking basically at the arterial network in the in the brain and the uh, blood supply that goes with it. So that if there is a demand uh, from a particular part of the brain, you know, if you're deep in uh, thought about a particular problem, then that will bring in uh, you know, a certain uh, fraction of the brain. And that, that, that part of the brain then calls upon, uh, upon the blood supply to increase. And it's that sort of thing that you can see in uh, uh, imaging of the brain. Functional imaging does just that. And you can see that because there is a, a change in the oxy oxygenation level of the blood. And that changes the magnetic properties, which changes the uh, uh, character of the image that you're watching. So you can see these changes, but you have to remember all the time that what you're looking at are changes to the blood supply, not to the neural network. And you can only infer you know, in a sort of secondary way, uh, what's happening in the brain itself. So the, I think there is a limit to what one can expect to get from functional imaging.